multilayer perceptron, also abbreviated as MLP here, MLP, okay. Um, also, it's known as artificial neural networks, so simply uh, referred to as uh, neural networks, okay. So NNN uh, is a type of complex uh, feedforward neural network that's used for predictive modeling, right? Because it has so many configuration parameters that we can actually tune to improve the performance of our model, right? Uh, this can be achieved through trial and trial and error, or maybe just by intuition. Now, in a feedforward neural network, the information flows from uh, the input uh, layer, okay, in a forward manner, uh, through more hidden layers. Like in our case here, we have two hidden layers. Okay, uh, and finally uh, to the output layer. Okay, now this algorithm is inspired by the structure and function of biological neural networks, right? Like shown here uh, below. Okay, so where these processing units, known as you know neurons, uh, arranged um, into layers, right? In the input layer, we have two nodes here. In the hidden layer, um, we have three nodes or neurons, right? We have two hidden layers here. And then finally, in our output layer, we have one node here, okay? So um, again, we can configure this um, and actually it's capable of approximating any function. So in classification here, uh, using neural networks, we are interested in approximating the underlying function that best discriminates between classes. Uh, again, with regression here, uh, especially in our problem at hand, we are interested in approximating a function that best, uh, best fits the real value output, okay? So uh, suppose, uh, let's use an example here. Suppose we want to buy a house, but we don't know how much it's worth, right? So we might look at factors such as the size of the house, okay? Or the number of the bedrooms, Okay, this could be another variable, uh, x1, uh, x2 here, or maybe the location, right? Uh, or maybe the condition of the property, to just mention a few, all right? We can use these functions or we can use these features or variables to estimate its value, okay? So this just the same way when we use MLP, you know, predicting the house of a price, right? So uh, our output here of the, the target variable. So to train this MLP, but let me just play here. So to train this MLP, as you can see in the visualization there, uh, we want to provide a large data set of houses along the characteristics of the prices, right? And these characteristics, um, you know, uh, will help us to determine, right? Uh, will, you know, the MLP will analyze this data and try to find the patterns or correlations between the different features, right? Whether the size of the house, you know, the number of bedrooms, location, and so on and so forth, okay? And between the different features and the prices. So for example here, um, the MLP might learn that the houses with more bedrooms, right? Houses with more bedrooms here uh, are likely to be more expensive. So let me just use here. So more bedrooms means likely to be more expensive, right? Or houses that are in a certain neighborhood um, might be more valuable than others right? So greater than in terms of value. Okay. So using this information, the MLP will try to make a prediction about the price. So the price here is our target variable. So we'll try to make a prediction based on the price of a new house based on these features. Okay. So once we train our MLP in a feed forward fashion, um, you know, we can use it to predict the price of a new house that actually we are interested in. Okay, uh, again, we just feed it with the inputs of the features of the house, such as the number of bedrooms, uh, location, uh, the condition of the property, and the MLP will just feed forward, okay, will feed forward this input uh, to the different uh, layers uh, in a feed forward mash, uh, fashion, okay. And then the MLP will apply, um, you know, the activation function and try to make a prediction of how much this house is worth, right? Uh, again, we can see here, we have something called backpropagation. Uh, this is just a training algorithm that's used commonly to, to train MLP uh, or neural networks, right? This backpropagation uh, algorithm just calculates the gradients of the loss function, 
okay uh, with respect to the weights again this is just a simple uh you know illustration of a feed forward network okay um uh, again we use it to update the weights in order to minimize the loss okay this is what the back propagation algorithm does okay so this uh process is repeated uh, iteratively until the weights converge okay uh to a set value that minimizes the loss sometimes we refer to that as a threshold so uh, again here uh, mlp um, i can use this analogy uh, just think of it as a virtual appraiser right we want to learn to estimate the value of a house based on its features right we have the size of the house you know the number of bedrooms location and so on and so forth okay based on its features right so lastly here we can see how uh, this neural network of mlp can be a powerful tool uh, in machine learning and we can use it in many applications or different applications such as predicting uh, the stock price or analyzing medical da data right maybe uh, diagnosing um, you know different abnormalities given some chest x-ray uh, images okay so with that let's uh, head off to uh, worker and see how we can implement that uh, so to do this uh, you, you want to click on choose button right so click on choose button then under function group we can select multi-layer perception right so we can click on the name of the algorithm uh, to look at the different uh, you know configuration okay this might take time um, again if you're a beginner you can just use the default uh, if you have some skills in this then there are some different parameters you can actually um, sort of uh, fine-tune here so for example here uh, we can see that uh, the first parameter that you can fine tune here is the hidden layer, but default is just left as A, right? Uh, we can specify the number here, maybe two hidden layers, for example. Okay, um, so maybe, and then there's learning rate here. We have momentum. All these are just values that we can actually uh, fine tune. So, for example, uh, the default here for momentum here, okay, um, is 0 0.2 by default. Okay, so it just means, you know, we want to continue updating the weights, even if there are no changes to be made, right? Uh, again, we can set the decay to be true uh, here, over here, okay? Which will just re reduce the learning rate over time, right? Because we perform more learning rate at the beginning of training and less towards the end. Uh, another parameter that you can fine tune uh, is called the learning process, right? So by setting a small value here, learning rate here, uh, 0.3 default, uh, we can set this to 0 0.1, okay? Uh, this just means how much you wanna update your model each time you uh, run your MLP uh, through an epoch, right? So let's go ahead and just click on okay here and click on start. So um, it just takes a few seconds over here and you can see uh, we just the default, you can see our RMSC is actually 4.7344, right? So we go in here and we can specify here, we just adjust that hidden layer to two, maybe reduce the learning rate to 0 0.2 there and click on okay, right? So we click on start again and let's see whether it improves that. Yep, so we're able to improve that by a small margin. Right. Another thing you can do here, uh, although not advisable, sometimes you can play around with the graphical user interface design of the network structure. So um, again, there's this parameter here. You can say true. You can just click on A here. And then you can click on OK. Um, again, it will just pop up. Um, so again, we'll click on start. So this will pop up a window like this, right? Um, again, here we can see that uh, we can just click on start. And the epo epoch here just means that we want to run our data here. So it, it just an epoch is just each uh, running the entire data set, okay, um, in a forward manner and the backward manner, right? We call that one pass. So 500 just means, you know, the data has been fed through your network in a feed forward and backward, uh, you know, as one epoch. Okay, so with that, we can accept that. And you can see, um, again, you can actually view the network structure um, of your MLP. So this is a cool feature in Worker um, that just helps you to design your network structure. It can be fun. Um, again, you know, it just allows you to do a simple train and split of your training rate. Okay, um, again, it will ask you different things to do. So 
Um, lastly, here you can see that you can configure, you know, different things, uh, of, uh, you know, for your MLP, right? So uh, with that, uh, again, we come to the end of this all this series of um, different algorithms. So we've already looked at linear regression, uh, you know, support vector machine and multi-layer, uh, KNN, and so on and so forth. So, um, so to conclude um, uh, this video, we've already seen that um, MLP is a type of uh, feed-forward neural network, meaning that information just flows from one direction, right, through the network, from the input layer all the way to the output layer, okay? So again, they're commonly used for classification and regression tasks, right? Uh, using a number of optimization techniques like this back propagation uh, algorithms, okay? So uh, again, we, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that MLP have been successfully used in a wide range of applications such as image recognition, recognition, uh, speech recognition, and uh, natural language uh, processing.